something is in front of us. This, I got very excited uh, when I found this outside in the rain. Very wet, looking very sorry for itself. And uh, yeah, I had to rescue it. I'm, not, I'm trying not to turn this around too much because this case is not in the best condition ever. But that's the other side. And uh, you can see it's falling to bits. Uh, this case has seen better days. But what I did, uh, as you'll already know from the title anyway, but I'm going to reach you. Oh, it's heavy and it's making a mess everywhere because it's bloody dirty. So what I did, I prized this side off. I read the bell and howl, but somehow didn't read what it's written around it in my excitement. I wanted to see what it was because I thought initially it might be some sort of recording device. So I prized the case off, which didn't take much effort because it's falling to bits. And inside we found the good news. Oh yes, this is a bell and hole, as it says in the title. Uh, just get the number off. The model number is actually on the other side. Um, 652, 16mm projector, built in about 1965. Uh, there you go, there's some, there's some arms. There's the uh, odds of the film, and there you go. Very nice. But, condition wise, not so nice. Uh, we could say that it's had a rough life. That, I don't know what that's for. What's that say? Auto load position. Oh, I say. I was thinking that lever was a bit stiff, but it's not actually in the mechanism. Uh, yeah, this side it's not too bad. It's dirty. Uh, it's not too bad. Everything seems to be moving nicely. Obviously, it will get oiled and serviced, but. Uh, yeah, it's not too bad. The clamp, which is in here, took me a while to work that out uh, when I first found it. I had to open that lamp door. But if I show you in here, there's the lamp, which looks brand new. Now, one thing that has concerned me initially with this is on the other side. I'll show you that in a second. Uh, this folds out to service the gate. As you can see, crud. Yeah, I think this has been uh, in storage for a long time. There's even spider's web there above the bulb, which you've got all different settings around here. Make sure that's on the right one. Uh, we're on 240 volts, aren't we? Yeah. All right. Uh, I'll just notice this panel has a little bit that twists around here. Don't know why it has a bit of twist around there, but it does. Somebody knows. Let me know. Uh, Yep, there's your different filming settings. Get my fingers out of the way. There we go. So, it was left in forward. Last time it was used. Very dirty down here. Ugh. Ugh. But nothing that can't be cleaned up. Uh, which is what I shall be doing during this video. It's the other side. So I hit the off button while doing that. It's the other side where my concerns start. Right, let's have a look. Now, first thing you'll notice on this side, well, you may not notice here, but there's no screws. All the screws have been taken out of this projector, so this just little bit of coercion comes off. Pretty grotty, but uh, I don't know if the camera shows this. This one I treated with WD 40, this one is untreated, so. Yeah, what I'm going to do is clean them up again with, uh, pardon me, with rubbing alcohol and just a light oil to shine it up. This is <laughs> the grotty bit. And I do say grotty because it is grotty. I think a lot of this is due to being out in the rain. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, let's put this camera closer. This has been out in the rain and in storage for a long time. Now, I did look around very quickly because 
as I said, the screws are missing, which means somebody's been in here for some reason. Now, the first thing that jumps out straight away is this, uh, what's that process called where you use electricity to apply a paint? But this cog here doesn't look original. So that may be a replacement. It could be that this motor's a replacement as well. So it could be that they've been in there doing that. I do not know. But the first thing I did, apart from look at that, is check the cogs and the belts. The belts, all here, all seem to have good tension, no uh, corrosion. I checked the belts that come up to here as well. In this, you can't see here, but as you twist that, the cogs here turn, and that turns there. And you can see this belt, but it's, it's not in perfect condition, but it's serviceable. Uh, the other thing I checked, you've got these belts here, and they're all in good condition, and they all appear to be present. Which is good. The other thing I checked straight away because I saw a, a, uh, a video that B Bishop PCM made uh, years ago on a Ballon Hole 60mm projector we found. One of the major weaknesses is this cog here. Over time, there is a slight mark there, but over time, these can crack and open wide up get big crack I think that's just scarring that's not actually a crack just uh just have a play here while we're talking yeah I think it's just it's been whacked at one point uh these can fail big style they crack and open up and if that happens it is a major job to uh repair this you to get this out which basically involves taking practically the entire projector apart. Not an easy job and it's got to be aligned perfectly when putting it back together. So if that had been cracked it would have been game over. Now I can't guarantee it's not cracked on the back because I haven't got it rotated in that position. We'll only find out when out when uh, when it fire it up but I had a feel as best I can all the way around there and I can't see any signs of anything obvious. These little lines across here have little grooves in them uh, I don't know I'm not entirely sure well, that's just damage I don't think it's cracking I think that's just damage from some some point so yeah so uh, what else this wheel moves very freely yeah, that will keep going for ages and down below here you can see when I release the camera oh dear. you can see the valves all set on I have no idea if they're working and there's only one way to find out we shall have to fire it up but there's a few stages to go through before that this has got to be cleaned up uh, there's dust and crud everywhere I would not like to either run the motors or get you focusing again Doink. There we go. Weird, it doesn't want to focus. Hello, focus properly. Thank you. We going to focus properly. There we go. Yeah, there's the valves. Right. I wouldn't want to fire this up with all this crud in the mechanics or in the electrics. It was wet, but it's been sitting for a few days now, so it's dried out admirably. Uh, so, I have no idea whether that's going to work. No idea under, whether any of it's going to work. It's a 1960s, so the capacitor up there should not, we hope, uh, present much, if any, trouble at all. Uh, the other thing that's gone on it is the handle at the top that is missing. The handle's still there, but the pad that was on it is there, so it's, it's painful to carry to say the least. So what I want to do, one bit I haven't looked in yet, is the amplifier, which is down here with the valves. There's an access to it underneath, so I'm now going to uh, attempt to get that off, and we'll have a look in there. I'm going to put this on another towel, because it's grotting everything up. Ugh, yuck. I shall be using uh, rubbing alcohol and brushes and stuff. I'll brush this out 
and then I'll use I'm rubbing alcohol to clean the whole thing as best I can. Obviously it won't be perfect, but it'll be much better than it looks now. So let's see if we can get that in that bottom section. Right, I've not been uh, filming the screwing bit because I know you don't want to watch me screwing. <laughs> Same old joke. Uh, but just thought I'd show you these feet. They're different. You screw, put your screwdriver in there, and uh, there's your screw when it comes out. The only problem is this top one here, the, uh, God, the foot was a bit damaged, so I've had to pry it off, and I'm hoping I can get it off. Oh dear, that one's going to be a pain. Oh, bugger. Mm -hmm. Let's get some tweezers on that one. All right, we'll be back. All right, here's a free tip. Only one of these came with a slot in the bottom for the screwdriver to go in. The others, well, this one just deteriorated. This one had a slot in, but as soon as I put the uh, screwdriver in, it cracked. So I found the best way to get these off is to use one of them. And put it on, and hopefully it's not going to prove me wrong. There we go. A lot of gunk coming off. It twists. Never going to get them off without damaging them, but there we go. So, there we go. That's a full flat. And let's have a look inside. <laughs> Straight away, I see spiders. So, back at the door. Excellent. Of locations for replacing, Excellent. even some sort of weird. Where'd that go? That went up there. I don't know. Okay, so it's not too bad in here. In fact, it's a lot better than I thought it was going to be. Let's have a quick tour around, shall we? Let's take it off, use the fingers, and yeah, we got our resident something in there. and general a lot of dust and crud nothing we can't see to them but hopefully these valves are fine uh, I can't see any obvious damage on the valves they'll look good down here there's no obvious damage so anything got another little transformer down there and out there are some capacitors to but I hope they're good. There's no obvious burns or explosions. You've got to tantal them here. Ugh. Yeah, <laughs> at this age, <laughs> you never know. There's no one behind here, but it feels fine. It's like that one, disc one. So they're more reliable than uh, the others, which I've had many blow up on me. Another one there. So. I am no expert on these things, so what I'm going to do uh, while we're here, because we've got quite a few fuses in the system, so let us zoom in, and uh, there you are. Uh, I've got my multimeter here on, let's see if these fuses are still in one piece. We're on to continuity test, quick, quick beep, and that one's good. Good. That's good. So all those system fuses are good. The only other one present, I'm gonna leave this bottom off, no need to put it back on. Having camera problems here, there we go. Oh, I hope I haven't made your head go for it too funny with that. The only other fuse is just take Oh god I'm leaving crud everywhere now. Oh well, such is life. Right. The only other one <sighs> my table's knocked. Oh well. Is in the lamp area. And it's just here. I'll just pop it out. There it is. And if I can get that out. Looks good. I'll just test it with the multimeter while we're here. There we go. 
Right. <laughs> One there. I'm expecting this to work fine. Yeah, there she goes. He's fine. So all the fuses in the system appear to be fine. So that means we've had no major electrical issues that have caused this to die. Talking of electrical issues, uh, I saw the port around the other side originally. I'm going to have to move it again, aren't I? And I thought, oh good, I've got my this port here. And I thought, oh my balloon hole uh, transformer will fit that. But when I got home, the transformer's 110, this is 230. So you can plug this straight into the mains. We've done some probing around and it looks like uh, uh, that's neutral. That one's earth. This big pin does nothing. And they're live. We're not going to do that until though, until we are crud clear in this system. So what I'm going to do now is take away, clean them up, and I'll be back. Right, a good hour later, and I have decrudded it of its crud. It's all clean on that side. That's just rust on the surface there. It's all been cleaned. It's all nice. And, uh, one So, uh, the projection side. Obviously, you can't, can't redo damage with just a clean. Oh, missed that bit, but uh, oh, and that bit, but most of it is now nice and shiny. You can see the name plates are all nice and shiny once more. Uh, wifey has found some screws, uh, it does need bolts to hold this other side on, but she's found some screws that do grip it, uh, so will actually act as a temporary uh, way to hold it. So, I'm now going to go and uh, put the uh, this other side on and. I'll be back in a moment. Right, a short while later, and I've put the screws in that my wife found. They're not a permanent solution because they're just screws and this requires bolts, so they will pull out if you try hard enough. But they are holding well enough to hold the screws together to the point where its case is actually working. I've uh, cleaned it and shined up the case. Looking much better. Although it does have that distressed look. So now if I press this button, this comes away, revealing the mechanism beneath. So, where do we go from here? Well, next job is to try and power it. Obviously the plug is what is known as a Jones plug, back here. Uh, as I've said before, look, that looks dirty, doesn't it? Looks a lot dirtier there. Right. As I said before, I believe it is through testing with the multimeter. We believe that it's earth, neutral, and both those are live, and that pin does nothing. But I'm going to leave that video until people have had a chance to comment on this video. If you want to give me any uh, precautions, tips before I try and power it, I am going to be using a BCD uh, on it in case there's any problems. So that if this blows, it's not going to take out the mains. Obviously I'll have this cover removed when I do. Uh, if I can't get a plug to fit this, which is not looking likely, I will bypass this and connect straight to the wires inside, uh, just to make it safer. Uh, apart from that, yeah, that's what we're going to do. And then we'll uh, try it. I don't have a very reactor on the voltage is up slowly unfortunately, but there we go. I can only do what I can do. So. If you got any comments, uh, tips, advice, then please leave them in the comments below. If you want to see part two and you're not subscribed, then please subscribe and social media and stuff. Links down below in the description. So, from me and the bell and howl, which was about to meet its mate in the skip. Thank you very much. You need to quit being dirty. You're a dirty boy. Yeah. <laughs>